YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rashid Bonner and I'm a school psychologist, behavior intervention specialist, and educational consultant. And today we're continuing on the topic of grief, but we're going to cover the Kubler-Ross five stages of grief that I'm sure you've heard about at some point or another. So let's begin. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was a Swiss psychiatrist who first introduced her five-stage grief model in her book, on death and dying based on her work with terminally ill patients in American hospitals. Now, it actually received much criticism because people studying her grief model thought the implication was that everyone grieved in the specific order and that everyone experiences all stages as they were listed by Kubler-Ross. Now, this is important to note because Kubler-Ross went on to eventually address these criticisms and went on to note that these five stages are, in fact, not linear. And some people may not experience any of these stages. So let's keep that in mind as we jump right into the first stage of grief, denial. This is the first stage of grief that's believed to really help us survive the initial impact of the loss. At first, grief feels like you're abandoned in the middle of the desert or the sea with no connection to anything. In this stage of denial, you may feel numb and start denying the validity of the news of the loss you've just experienced. Now, denial often helps to pace our feelings of grief so we're not overwhelmed with grief. And once the shock and denial start to fade and we stop fighting the reality we've been presented with, the feelings we were suppressing begin to surface and we can further facilitate the healing process. One common example of denial is trying to convince yourself that your loved one has indeed not passed away. And another example is telling yourself, I feel perfectly fine after hearing the news of the loss. Anger. Anger is how many of us express pain. Remember how I just stated that the feeling we suppress while in denial begins to surface once that initial shock and denial begins to fade? Well, anger is very important during the grieving process because it allows us to confront those suppressed feelings. Anger can also give some temporary structure to the numbness and nothingness of loss. Now, during this stage of anger, it's not uncommon to be angry at the cause of death or loss, the deceased, yourself, loved ones, or others who had a relationship with the deceased, God, or even the doctor, nurse, or caretakers. Allow yourself to experience and express your anger in healthy ways that aren't detrimental to your health and the health of others, such as venting your frustrations to a trusted friend or relative or to yourself, sports, running, resistance training, and other forms of exercise. It's also important to mention that if you can't seem to shake an angry mood and you feel constantly overwhelmed by anger, it may be time to ask for the help of a therapist to help you work through the sources of your anger and help you develop better coping mechanisms. Bargaining. When you experience loss, have you ever made a deal with God or a higher power? Saying such things such as, please God, if you just heal my mother or my father, I promise to never complain about anything ever again. Or what if I had left the meeting and picked up the phone earlier? Or what if I took half a day off and arrived at home three hours earlier? Or what if I did more to encourage them to work out and make healthier food choices? Often stemming from guilt, bargaining after a loss typically involves if-only statements like the ones that I just gave. These statements focus on regrets about what you did or didn't do before the person died. We may even bargain with the pain and say, I'll do anything if I don't have to feel the pain of this loss. These statements might make you falsely believe that you can avoid grief through negotiation. We're often so desperate to get our life back to how it was before the loss that we're willing to make a major life change to get our life back to quote unquote normal. Depression. This stage represents the emptiness and acute sadness that we feel when we realize the person or situation is gone or over. Our attention has moved into the present and it often feels like this stage will last forever. Now, it's important to note that this form of depression is best described as acute sadness, which is the appropriate response to a great loss and not necessarily a sign of mental illness. However, there is overlap with symptoms of clinical or major depression. Now, sadness hits people at different times. 
Some people may be distraught within the first year. However, it is not uncommon to be consumed by sadness three or more years after loss. Now in this stage, we may experience crying, worrying, hopelessness, withdrawal from life, insomnia or hypersomnia, feelings of numbness, fatigue, and even experience suicidal thoughts, thinking, what's the point of going on or wanting to join the deceased? Acceptance. Now, acceptance doesn't mean you're okay with your loved one being gone or that you're okay with what just happened. It just means you now accept the new reality of your life as a permanent reality and that you're going to be okay. We never like this reality, but we learn to accept it and live with it. It is our new normal. Our task isn't necessarily to get over grief or move on. Our task is to integrate the loss into our lives so we can move forward with a new reality. So in summary, here are the main takeaways from today's video on the Kubler-Ross five stages of grief. Listen, even though Kubler-Ross's model describes five stages of grief, some people may not experience some of the stages. It's also important to note that people may not experience the five stages of grief in the order that they are given or described. Now, denial is a stage believed to help us survive the initial impact of the loss, and in this stage, we often feel numb. Anger is the stage where many of us externalize our pain. This is the stage where many of us begin to confront our suppressed feelings of grief, and anger can also give us some temporary structure to the numbness and nothingness of loss. Bargaining is a stage of guilt and regrets, where we're so desperate to get our life back to how it was before the loss, that we're willing to make a significant life change to get our life back to normal. This stage typically involves if only or if then statements. And depression represents the acute sadness and emptiness we feel when we realize and remember the person or situation is gone or over. And in this stage, we may experience similar symptoms to clinical or major depression. Acceptance is the stage where we accept the new reality of our life as a permanent reality and that we're going to be okay. It does not mean that we're okay with our loved one being gone or we're okay with the loss. I hope this was helpful. Now, if you liked today's video, make sure you let YouTube know by leaving a like. It helps my video show up more in research results so we can spread this information to those in need. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of the upcoming content on this channel. Next week, we will review complicated grief. Until next time, make sure you take care of yourselves and take care of one another. Peace.